Hey everyone, uh, back from Oceanside 70.3. Thought I would just try to put together a quick video recap and then uh, hopefully next week get connect with Gerard and do a, a proper a proper video on uh, where training's at leading into Ironman Texas and you know some thoughts going into that and maybe uh, touch on a few things that I didn't cover here today. But I just wanted to be uh, you know able to quickly put this together and, and get it out there since, uh, you know, that allowed me to close the book and, and move on to the, to the final preparation for Ironman Texas, which is just a few weeks away. Uh, overall, uh, the race wasn't really what I was hoping for on the day. Um, definitely, you know, anytime you finish outside of the money, that's, that's not a, a great, great way to, 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 you know, start paying to work isn't, isn't a long-term viable option. So, uh, I've got to make a, a few adjustments, uh, leading into, uh, Texas. I think I've, uh, got, uh, at least, you know, the biggest issue nailed down. Um, but, um, yeah, always a, a few question marks when, when you get a bit of a head scratcher, like, like I did at the beginning of the bike here, but, um, you know, obviously the water was cold. 57 degrees is, is not warm by any means, but I, I felt pretty comfortable in the wetsuit. Um, I, I really do quite like the QR, uh, wetsuit. I've always felt relatively warm in that. Um, obviously with Raynaud's hands and feet are, are numb completely, um, as soon as you get in the water. Uh, but you know, I, I felt like I was swimming pretty well. I got, uh, off the line pretty well and was able to, to get off to a good start. And, um, I was, you know, swimming pretty much right where I, I thought the best case scenario would be going into the second to the last turn, had a little bit of a tactical error and lost a couple of positions. And, uh, that's where the gap opened up on the final turn. So that group that I was swimming with went out of the water in 24 minutes and, uh, I ended up uh, high 24. So, you know, it didn't cost me much in the grand scheme of things. Um, in future races, hopefully that doesn't happen. Obviously being, having that extra 50 seconds to a minute, um, does allow me to get in, get settled a little bit easier and hopefully get the heart rate back down a little bit before the big hitters on the bike. Um, in this race, obviously Sam Lionel and, uh, Chris and Jackson, uh, we're all swimming pretty much together. So they all, um, were pushing the pace from the onset. So, you know, being able to get, the heart rate down a little bit before uh, they come up on me is is obviously a benefit and you know maybe it gives me a, a better chance to uh, hang on um, the way that it worked out on on the day though there there was nothing that I could do on the bike um, I don't know if it was a cold that got to me uh, I did wear a base layer under my kit which I typically do in the cold races I wasn't like shivering uncontrollably by any means um, I, I felt worse than I did, obviously hands and feet were completely numb, but you know, I, I can deal with that level of discomfort. It, it just, I could not get my heart rate up. Usually I, I'll be in the mid 170s for the first 40 minutes on the uh, heart rate uh, for the first 40 minutes on the bike. And I, I couldn't, couldn't get my heart rate above 140, 145. So uh, that was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, it was pretty frustrating to be honest because I was just moving backwards after after what was a good enough swim to give me the result that I wanted on the day uh the guys that I came out of the, you know the top I think five of the top six guys came out of the water right around me you know so I was where I needed to be out of the water I just um you know wasn't functioning for that first hour and the second half I I finally started to be able to get the heart rate to creep up a little bit and I was able to get the power up um a little it, it never came completely there. Um, and yeah, it's just, it was a, a bit of a frustration and, um, you know, I'm, I'm chalking it up to, to just uh, an issue with the cold. Uh, that's never happened before like that, but, um, you know, I, I really can't think of anything else that would have caused that, you know, such a low, you know, the inability to get the heart rate up, the fatigue levels coming in were right where I wanted them. Uh, for a race, even maybe a little bit, uh, you know, I, I might have, you know, got ready too quickly, which is not usually an issue either, especially in the cold. Um, you know, so the taper, I think was good. The travel went well. So, you know, and I didn't get sick after the race or anything like that. You know, so the only thing that I can think of is, is that it was an issue with the cold. Uh, so that's, I guess, you know, a bummer, but that that's racing, you know, they don't always go the way that you want. When I, I got off the bike, I was well far back, but you know, the, the thought process in the second half, when things finally started to turn around a little bit, 
on the second half of the bike was just, all right, salvage what you can, get as much out of it as you can. And obviously it was important to just get a, a score on the board here being the first um, points race of the of the new Ironman series. So it was just, you know, try to salvage as many points as you can. You never know what's going to happen later in the season. And, you know, I, I obviously was hoping that this wasn't going to be after how the bike went. I was hoping that this wasn't going to be a score that I rely on, but you never know. And so, um, you know, it was just try to salvage what you could. And uh, I came out of transition not feeling very well. The heart rate was still pretty low, um, but it started to creep up relatively quickly. Um, you can see that my uh, second mile was the slowest. Um, but I was able to, you know, build through that second mile. And then by the third mile, I felt like I was running with a full stride and, and wasn't fighting to, you know, you know, catch my breath or anything like that. And then the heart rate kind of settled in and locked in and, and stayed pretty steady for the rest of the run. As you can see, like, you know, obviously there's some pretty big punchers. It's a relatively flat course, but there's some pretty big punchers here. Um, and you can see I was pretty, pretty darn consistent. You know, obviously I look at both pace and, um, the effort pace with the, with the Coros platform here. And I was able to keep that pretty steady throughout. And, um, you know, the, the couple of faster miles in there were, were slight downhill grade with a slight tailwind. So, um, you know, there you know, wasn't a, a, a surge or anything like that at that point, but I was able to, um, you know, keep the internal motivation to just, uh, you know, try to salvage what I could on the day. And, and obviously slowly moving, you know, picking a few people off here and there definitely helped, uh, keep things going as well. And just kind of kept that, um, you know, the, the fire in the belly a little bit to keep running hard all the way to the finish. And then, you know, obviously every second that you save on the, you know, on the race is, is another point that you earned, um, toward, towards the end of the season. So, you know, that, that definitely kept me, um, engaged and, and pushing along and you know Oceanside is is a multi-loop course and it has a lot of energy there's a lot of fan support there so that always helps as well so uh definitely uh thanks thanks to everybody who uh was cheering me on even though I wasn't uh having the best day out there it's it's always encouraging to to feel the support even when you you, you feel like you maybe haven't earned it on the day but uh yeah, so overall ended up 13th, not, uh, like I said, not where I wanted to be, but it, it was the result that I earned, um, did not have the bike that I wanted, did not have, uh, <clears throat> that was probably the worst power that I've ever had in a 70.3 as a pro and, and the training that I've had leading up to the, the day definitely didn't reflect the, what I was able to put out, which is, which is always frustrating if, uh, you know, you get your butt kicked on, on a day where you had a great performance, you can tip your cap and, and, uh, say, yeah, you know, everybody was just better than me. And, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely not saying that if I would have had my best bike that I would have been fighting for the win. I think the top three guys were, were phenomenal on the day. Um, but I definitely would have uh, been a little bit farther up in the field than, than I finished. Uh, and, and, um, yeah, so that's uh, fuel for the fire, uh, in the build on to, Ironman Texas. So like I said, I will uh, do a proper video with uh, some like real training footage and things like that later on in hopefully mid next week. Uh, I just wanted to get this out quick and, and uh, be able to, to close the book on Oceanside for 2024. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, make sure you uh, uh, stay, stay tuned for the next training update here coming soon. See you next time.